Let's have a look at the matrix representations of the position and momentum operators for the quantum harmonic oscillator. In the previous videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, I looked at the matrix representations of the Hamiltonian operator and the ladder operators. All of these matrix representations were in terms of the energy eigenbasis. This is a very convenient basis to work with because the Hamiltonian is associated with the energy of the system. And the Hamiltonian operator in quantum mechanics is essential for understanding the time evolution of a system in quantum mechanics. So let's have a look, let's, let's build on the relationships that I derived in the previous video for the ladder operators, and let's find some relationships for the position and momentum operators. If you remember from an earlier video, I expressed both the position and momentum operators in terms of A and A dagger. These are the uh, lowering and raising operators, respectively. In the previous video, I derived these relationships here in terms of the Kronecker delta. And these are short form uh, package notations for the matrix representation in the energy eigenbasis. And they tell us that uh, these are not diagonal matrices, but they are off diagonal matrices. And that's what we found in the previous video. The matrix representation for A has all of these values, these square root of n, square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, all of these values are just above the diagonal. And the diagonal is zeros. Whereas over here, we have to take the transpose, or in general, the Hermitian conjugate. But because all of these are real values, the transpose is all that we have to do. Taking the, the complex conjugate doesn't actually do anything to the elements of the matrix. So this is just a flipped over version of this matrix. So these guys, if you flip them over, if you take the transpose, you will just get back and forward between these two guys. I'm going to write down some uh, very important relationships that we're going to use to construct the position and momentum matrices in terms of these matrix representations. So first, let's have a look at position. The position operator, which I'm going to represent as x hat, that is equal to, we have a normalization constant out the front, as is usually the case. We're going to have h bar over 2m omega. And that's underneath a square root. That is our normalization constant. And we actually have a derivation in the quantum mechanics playlist where you can find that I derived the specific value for this uh, coefficient over here. There's also another video for these normalization constants. So these normalization constants are incredibly important because they allow us to actually uh, predict values. Because it's, it's very useful to have relationships without actual units, but when you have to uh, actually predict an experimental outcome, it is important to have units. It is important to have things like m and omega and h bar. So what is this numerical coefficient multiplying? Well, it's actually the sum of a dagger and a. The order does not matter. We could have the order over here swapped around. But I'm going to keep it in this order specifically because there's going to be an analogous form for momentum. And the order does ma matter for the momentum case because we're going to be subtracting these two guys. Over here we have addition, and addition is commutative. So this is not multiplication. For operators, when you multiply them, that is not commutative in general. So the non-commutativity of operators in quantum mechanics is a very important general property. There are special cases where you do have commutativity, but these ladder operators, they are not one of them. Over here we have addition, so we are allowed to swap the order. So addition is commutative. So we have A dagger and A. That's A and its Hermitian conjugate or the Hermitian adjoint, as it is also known. Now, let's write the analogous relationship for momentum. So we're going to have p hat, that is the momentum operator. Over here, the coefficient is not a real number. It's actually an imaginary number. We have i times. This is actually not going to be the same because the units of position and momentum are different. We're going to have to move this m omega upstairs. So we're going to have h bar m omega on 2. So I've just moved those guys upstairs. And here's what I'm also going to have. I'm going to have a dagger. And I'm going to subtract off a. So this is why I chose this specific ordering over here. We can see that these relationships are analogous. Let's have a look at some of the differences between these two relationships. Over here, we have a real number. Over here, we have an imaginary number, because we have the imaginary unit i multiplying the square root. Inside the square root, n times omega is in the numerator of this fraction, whereas n times omega is in the denominator of this fraction. 
This ensures that the dimensions are consistent. We have the correct units. We have units of position over here, but we have units of momentum over here. So that is an important difference over here. Moving these guys up and down uh, in the numerator and the denominator ensures that we have the right units. That is another uh, important role that these constants out the front, these numerical coefficients play. They make sure that there is dimensional consistency. And that is essential when you're doing an experiment and you're actually trying to get uh, values for your experiment. You're trying to predict those values. You need to make sure that the units match on both sides of the equation. So here we have the sum and here we have the difference. That is a, a very important point, and that's going to uh, be very evident when we look at the matrix representations. So first, I'm going to have a look at the position uh, matrix. So position can be expressed or represented in this, in this way over here. I'm going to write this arrow uh, facing backwards and forwards because this is not an equal sign. This, I'm not saying x is equal to this matrix. I'm saying x can be represented by this matrix in a particular basis. And the basis we're dealing with is the energy eigenbasis. So let's have a look at what these guys are going to be. On the diagonal, we're just going to have zeros because this is not a diagonal matrix and this is not a diagonal matrix. We're just going to have the sum of these two matrices. Now, what I'm also going to do is, for simplicity, I'm going to factor this fraction out at the front because I don't want to have to write that fraction so many times. So 2m omega. That's going to go out the front. And inside the matrix, the top left element is going to be zero. And all the diagonal elements are also going to be zero. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the sum of this and this. And if we take the sum, what we're going to get is we're going to get a square root of one and the square root of one over here. And then the diagonal is going to be zero. And down here, we're going to have zero, zero. We're going to have square root of two, square root of two. We're going to have another zero. Remember, this is the diagonal. And I'll do one more row over here. These guys are all zeros. And then we get to square root of 3. So the 0 here, square root of 3, 0, 0. And this is going to keep on going downwards. And the diagonal is going to keep on going. The diagonal is going to be zeros. And here we're going to have this keep, keeps on going. And I'll draw the brackets because this is a matrix. So let's examine what I've actually drawn over here. The diagonal is just zeros because we have no contribution for the diagonal over here, and we have no contribution for the diagonal over here. We're just taking the sum of these two matrices. And in the previous video, we saw that each of these individual matrices corresponded to the off diagonal. This top off diagonal over here, this comes from A. So this has come from A, and this has come from A dagger. So we have this guy plus its transpose. That's what we've done over here. This is the off diagonal above the diagonal, and this is below the diagonal. That's what taking the sum does. What happens when we take the difference instead? We're going to have to assign a minus sign to all of these guys over here because they have come from A without the dagger. A dagger is going to remain unchanged. So we're still going to have this over here. But for momentum, we're going to have minus signs on all of these guys above the diagonal. And we're also going to have a different coefficient at the front. So I'll draw that uh, matrix over here. So P is going to be represented by the following matrix. We're going to have this imaginary coefficient with h bar m omega on 2 underneath a square root sign. And then let's have a look at what's going to happen over here. So this bottom part is going to remain unchanged. So we're still going to have 0. We're still going to have square root of 1, and then 0 and 0. And what's going to happen over here? Well, for this row, we're going to have a minus sign. So we're going to have a minus square root of 1. Then we're going to have 0 over here, because this is the diagonal. And what's going to happen over here? Well, we're still going to have square root of 2. This is going to be a positive square root of 2. And then we're going to have 0. Now, what's going to happen over here in the next column? This is column 2. Remember, because we start uh, labeling from 0. 0, 1, 2. Then we're going to have a minus root 2. And this is going to be 0. And then we're going to have root 3. This is the diagonal, so that's also going to be 0. And then over here, we're going to have minus root 3. So this is plus root 3, minus root 3. And we have two zeros over here. Now, I'll draw some dots over here to show that this keeps on going. This is unbounded. There is no upper bound. Now, in practice, if you're actually doing this computationally, you probably would you'd, you'd prefer to deal with a finite matrix. So uh, you can actually chop off the rest of these guys. You can only consider the small values over here. 
if your system has only got excitations that are a few excitations, a few quanta above the ground state, then you don't even have to worry about all of those uh, large values over here. You can just truncate the matrix. That's what this is called. It's truncating the matrix. And that is commonly done when you're trying to do this computationally. So I'll draw the right bracket over here. So let's just compare these two matrices. The position matrix has got the sum of A dagger and A. Whereas over here, the momentum matrix has got the difference of A dagger and A. So over here, we have the contribution that has come from A dagger, that's positive, and the contribution that has come from A is negative. All of these guys have a minus sign. And this would keep on going forever. We would have root four, root five, root six, and so on. And it would be a mirror image. So this mirror image would be represented over here. So all we've done is we've taken the transpose of one of these guys and we've added it to itself, or in this case, subtracted. So isn't that interesting? We have this analogous relationship between the position and momentum matrices uh, for the quantum harmonic oscillator. So in the previous video, we saw these matrices. We saw A and A dagger. And make sure you watch that video uh, so you can see the analogous relationship that we found. And one important thing that I want to stress is that units are essential. There is dimensional consistency because we've moved this m omega into the numerator. And over here we have the m omega in the denominator. So these constants are essential. They tell you the physical values. Over here, these are not physical values. The momentum cannot be equal to square root of two. Right? The momentum has to actually have a physical value. This has units of momentum. That's why it's essential. And why is this imaginary uh, unit i showing up over here? Well, because you're not actually going to be measuring an imaginary value. You're actually you're going to use these imaginary numbers. You're going to use these matrix mechanics to find observable values. And that's what quantum mechanics allows you to do. It, it takes all of this complicated maths, and it gives you observable values. These are predictions for your experiment. That's, what, that's the goal of all of this machinery over here, all this mathematical machinery. So as a summary for this video, we used the relationships for the raising and lowering operators over here. We used these relationships, and we found their matrix representations. And we wrote that in a condensed notation using the Kronecker delta symbol. And that was done in the previous video, so you can actually see a and A dagger uh, drawn out on the whiteboard. And then we've, what we've done is we've just expressed position and momentum in terms of these ladder operators, and we've taken the sum and the difference of those two matrices, and that's given us these two representations. So that's it for this video. Make sure you check out the other videos in the Quantum Mechanics playlist.